providing inspiration and community for women in business of Middle Tennessee. This is Powered by Her with Tiffany Anton. You're indestructible. I'm so excited that you're joining us. If you want to know more about Powered by Her, you can go to PoweredByHerCommunity.com, find out all the things we're doing, find out ways to support us, and definitely buy a t-shirt to represent the swag of Powered by Her. I want to take a second to shout out to Harper's Rare Books and Collectibles for partnering with us on this season of Powered by Her. Check out Harper's for all your needs of rare collectible items, community events, go to their Facebook page and learn more. On today's episode, I have Jen and Kara from Leisure Services, and I guess you guys are like the dynamic duo. I feel like yeah. you often don't see one without the other. That's true. That is true. Um, I, I think maybe you do exist without the other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> we, we did. We had to go to different churches so that there was something that yeah. was different. Yeah. We, couldn't, we couldn't do this. So that people same. could, like, we're, do people go, who's who again? Yes, What's very what? much. Yeah. They'll go, hey, Jen. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm yeah, Kara. Yeah, 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 a lot. So you guys are with Leisure Services, mm -hmm. and I had met you years ago, um, <clears throat> kind of supporting the MOPS program that we have in town, mm -hmm. Mothers of Preschoolers. Um, tell me about what you do with Leisure Services, because it's a million things. Yeah, so I started back in 2000, so I've been there quite a long time, um, which is That's a, shocking. a little bit ago. Yes, <laughs> so I started there in 2000 as a day camp assistant. Shortly after that, went over and started doing special programs coordinator, and that was just kind of a part-time gig as well. 2005, I started my current job now, which is recreation superintendent, and I've been doing that ever since. So I'm out at the Cane Creek Rec Center, and we have programs from fitness, camps, special interest classes, big special events, um, and just all of those things that happen there. So Jen, Leisure <clears throat> services, kind of explain what that is in, in relation to the city, to the programs that are on. So, you know, the city obviously house, like houses the police department, the fire department. Well, we're like the fun department. The yeah. fun part. So I like that that's we're where you come for all the fun. Yes. And and what, I'm interrupting. You're good. He, they always say, like, you have to go to the water department. You have to go to the electric. You, you only come to us if you want to. You like, get to go you to Leisure get Services. To, yes, yeah. that's something cool. Yeah. So, I mean, and there's programs like dance. You, mm -hmm. you run a dance program there. You run fitness classes. So what's made you want to stick with it? And, and Jen, when did you start? So I, my story is so similar to her. So in 2001, I started as a day camp counselor and then hung around until I graduated from tech and then just sort of fell into the special programs coordinator and I'm still there now. So recreation isn't what I went to school for, but it was like you, it's recreation. Like it's so fulfilling and fun. Like you can't, you can't leave. Well, and so what has made you feel like this is kind of where you wanted to stay and kind of move up to superintendent, Kara, that you wanted to kind of move your career and stay with leisure services? I went to school and got my uh, undergraduate and graduate in health and physical education. So I knew I always was interested in activity and movement and especially kids and, you know, just physical movement, physical education. That's always just been a big part. So when I got the job as a day camp assistant, that was part of, you know, it's a great part-time job. Um, and I'm a very creative person. And as I stayed on and got to do these other programs, that's been what's kept me there. I'm never bored. Like I'm dying to be bored. Like at some <laughs> point just to be like monotonous, like just doing the same thing over and over. But I get to use that creativity to come up with new programs or to just come up with all kinds of different um, things that go along with the programs yeah. and Event fitness. Themes. And yeah, it's just, it's peaked all those things that I love um, and that interests me. And so it's just like the best job. Do you for feel me. like you've gotten to, you've been able to have the autonomy to kind of make the position what you wanted it to be? Yeah. And we have an amazing director, Rick Woods. And he has given us a lot of freedom to do those things. And I think without that, it would be really hard. Um, he, I feel like he trusts us to make good decisions. And we've, we've done enough and had an, enough good programs and built a lot of big things that it's not just, you know, 
you know, you have to do this and you have to do that. So there is that freedom to, to do what, what interests us. Well, and yeah. another fun part of the job is like what's kind of trendy now, like what do people enjoy doing and, you know, figuring out classes and things that are, so it's constantly evolving. Cause well, and with, with the fitness world, not to date you, but 20 years ago. It was totally it was different. Totally different. 20 we were, years ago. We were just at, at a, um, I was at a, a dance cardio class and somebody was talking about step classes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, gosh, I mean, you rarely see steps around ever anymore, but that, I'm sure 20 we years ago. We still got two of them. <laughs> I'm sure that that was probably, I mean, there were probably a lot more people doing oh, step. Oh yeah, absolutely. Step that they, was like the dance class of that time. Yeah, yeah. you even had multiple steps. Like you'd get <laughs> yeah. three or four boxes yeah. and like make these crazy choreographed routines. Yeah. But now our step class might have a little more like hit work in yeah. it and stuff. So it's just, everything changes. It has evolved. Like I feel like when we first started, when we first started in 2000 to 2003, maybe, yeah. I mean, there was like rhythmic toning. I was going to say this? that, yes. Rhythmic toning and cardio. So, so what is your rhythmic fine. toning? I really have I think it was probably like Zumba or club cardio before yeah. those formats existed. I, um, I'm thinking of rhythmic gymnastics. You know? I yeah. with the rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm, <laughs> I'm picturing. Totally different. So another, and, and I feel like women kind of, it's like, well, I do this, but then I do this as well. And I do mm -hmm. this as well, and I do this as well. So you guys also run an oil business, mm -hmm. not oil like Chen's oil, oil in my car. Yeah. In my car. Um, so tell me about that. What do you? What's? Well, and I, I mean, what got me interested in it was my children were really young, and they were getting sick all the time, like little children do. And so I had a friend who introduced me into, you know, just some more natural ways of doing things, and that just sort of naturally progressed in like. Telling her, I don't know if you want to tell your anxiety story. Oh yeah, story, I mean, but... I I suffer so from you guys anxiety. Sell doTERRA. Yeah. Yes, so it's DoTerra oils, but we I suffer from anxiety really bad, and I've been on medication for years. Got off it for kids, and she was telling me, you know, like you should try this because I didn't want to get back on medication. Just There's just for me from the earth. Yeah, <laughs> and so we were. It just worked, and so I was like, well, let's you know keep trying this and stuff. And the whole thing, it just fits in really well with our whole, what we do with leisure services as far as okay. creating a healthy life. Um, and especially for women, just um, a lot of it is just how can you uh, take your, take control of your, you know, situation. Um, giving them and, options. And yeah, and giving you the tools to do stuff. So, and it's not just oils and just, you know, yeah. sniffing oils and rubbing oils. There's different supplements that help you and, and stuff like that. So it's yeah. just really, it's been beneficial for us and teaching women how to um the options that they have other than just um the the traditional ways of, of what yeah, we do just not being life. overcome yeah. by your circumstances yeah. like just finding other ways so mm -hmm. yeah. i was just yeah. telling another mom recently about how women are just they're they're such an anchor in their families and in in environments and so oh if you're not taking care of yourself um personally and it, it, it goes everywhere. And so yes. if you're not <clears throat> working out and kind of getting out that aggression or the stress that you have in your life or, or eating healthy or taking care of your body, it just can bleed over into mm -hmm. so many other things. Yes, yeah. and it's so easy to stop doing those things when you get um, overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Like you're the first person you stop taking care of. And it's just, and so that's, I would feel like that's one of our biggest mission points mm -hmm. is like really encouraging and creating a lot of community at the rec center so that when people come in to take an exercise class or whatever, you know, you're pouring into them and the same with the oils, like providing some solutions. So they mm -hmm. really do. They... Yeah. And just, you know, life is hard. And if anything we've learned over the last couple of years, it's just plain hard. And to have anything out there, whether it's exercise or a photography class or a painting class mm -hmm. or Tai Chi or, you know, any of those things, um, finding something out there that is an outlet and that you enjoy and that those sort of things are so needed. And I think as women, as moms, we, we do. We just have a tendency to put that off. And for me, and I've told her this a million times, like I, I realized during um, quarantine and that whole time where everything got really quiet, I saw the things that were like deal breakers, like non-negotiable things for me. Uh -huh. I went back to a lot of things I hadn't done in a while. And even my workout routines, they changed from what I had been doing. And it just helped me, it gave me a lot of clarity of what um, I needed and didn't need. 
um, work-wise, home-wise, just everything. It was well, really, it was ended up being a really good thing. And one of those things in particular was like we talked specifically about creating more margin and just not packing all of your time and like leaving some space so that you have some availability mm -hmm. and you don't feel always worked. Mm -hmm. so. Taking care of yourself. Yeah. So what did you think, Jen, like, we'll start with you. What did you guys think at like 10, 12 years old? What is this what you thought your life was going to look like? Did you think you were going to be kind of working with your best friend and kind of? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know that I would have ever dreamed that up, but that that has worked out fantastic. Um, I've joked around and I don't know if I should say this on Go here, but <laughs> I, my major, I mean, I don't know what my 10 year old self wanted to do. I, who knows? Yeah, I don't. But I was really still very confused when I started at Tech about, you know, what, what kind of career would be best suited for me. And I went into education for a hot second and I started as a day camp counselor at Leisure Services and I changed my major so fast. I was like, <laughs> this is not for me. Yeah. But I'm still over the, the camp program um, and I love the kids, but I just wasn't cut out of that fabric. So I think I was really blessed by getting plugged into recreation because I totally fell in love with all of it. Like, but I don't know that that's where I saw myself going. And what about you, Kara? Well, I ten year old Kara, yeah, what about you? Definitely didn't see this. Um, I think ten year old Kara was probably thinking I was going to be a zoologist. <laughs> I was, was going to work. I Which you're animals. not far off from. I she like, lives you on a farm. Friends of us here too. Yes, I like. Yeah, I just really like animals, and um, probably that I, I dabble with. Okay, I'm going to be a vet until I realize, like you know, oh wait, they don't always make it, and yeah. so I don't know if I can deal with that. Yeah. Um, but very, very soon after that, I, I wanted to be either a nurse or a PE teacher. I had the best PE teachers growing up. I just loved it. I loved the recreational side of PE and just the, the fun and the games and the kids. And so I, I kind of was deciding between those and then went full into education. Um, from probably high school on, I knew that's what I was going to do. Yeah. So what keeps you guys going in your business? selling oils you've been doing that for a, a bit of time now mm -hmm. and so what keeps you thinking okay maybe i i don't need you know i don't need to throw on the towel i'm gonna keep doing this what what kind of things i'll tell you for me it's like every time if you get to that point where your cup's a little full and starting to splash over and you're like i just can't keep it all going when i start to question it is when I'll get a text message from somebody or somebody will call I'm like, hey, this either this helped me so much or I'm struggling with this so bad. Can you help me with this? I'm like, well, then I, you know, yeah. I just take those as they come and help what I can. And I also don't try to set crazy goals. And I just try to like, sometimes I do better if I just take things one day at a time and don't overwhelm myself mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm in agreement with that because um, we've talked about it a lot recently and it's just helping people, helping women and just like she said, getting those texts that just say, hey, my daughter is struggling with this. I just got one when we, when we walked in here um, asking for help with a um, situation and it's just there's nothing greater than being able to help somebody with that situation um, and giving them, you know, the options or um, the criteria to do something yeah. about it. Well, and two, it's like the community of like, I can help you through my experiences and you can help me through yours. And I just, it's so many new friendships and mm -hmm. it's just a and lot that, to Just it. even working at the rec center, whether it's camps or any of the classes, people that come in and that are walking at the park, like we've become a hub there at the rec center um, for just information or, you know, it's a two mile loop around the park. And people come in and mm -hmm. get water go or to the go to the yeah, bathroom, yeah. right? And so we've started talking to those people. And it's just those relationships. And, you know, as people open up to you, if they've been coming to your classes or if their kids have been coming to camp, for them to just be able to be like, hey, um, what are your thoughts on this? Or I have this. And there's just no greater joy to yeah. me than being able to help somebody like that. That's just the best feeling Um at all and that's what that would definitely be what keeps us going or me going anyway how do you important. think that that having 
the partnership that the two of you guys have together. Um, as I've grown older as a woman, I've realized how important my female relationships are. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that some people don't ever understand that or realize that. What Speak to that a little bit of just... Well, I feel like it would be very easy for me to say, I I have, have a moment. Oh, I've taken you for granted and I'm really sorry. I, I mean, I really, I have. I've just, I'm, we were, I was in college when we met and mm -hmm. we were working, you know, the same job and it just, we had children around the same time, got married relatively close at the yeah. same time. And so she really has become more just like an older sister. Mm -hmm. She's <laughs> um, but, but I, I guess because over, well, about half my life or about at the halfway point, I've had her around and you do, you start to forget that not every woman has that. Yeah. And it's only been just, I guess, kind of recent that maybe during the pandemic when like you're taking that space and you're not around people as much, but was like, man, I'm really lucky to have somebody mm -hmm. that I can just like share all the ugly with or push you when things get hard and just because yeah. I really like to talk and share I'm a feeler well and I somebody told me the other a couple months ago you need a, a five percent friend you're going to tell 95 percent of your story to to most people but you need the the person that you can tell that five percent that is oh, ugly I and you're that. never going to tell people you need yeah. that person because you have to get it I mean yeah. women just we don't do well when we're keeping yeah. it all in yeah yeah no, so I agree. what about I mean what any of your thoughts on on the women or Jen specifically. It's, it's very, I mean, <laughs> she, she said it exactly like we take it for granted until somebody points it out. And we do get that a lot. Like you guys have no idea how lucky you are. Um, and we don't just go to work and, you know, work with, you know, our work people and then have each other on the weekends or whatever, or have to call or text. Like we're literally, our offices are right beside each other. And we work well together. Um, you know, we, we can bicker, we can argue, but we are easily able to figure that all out. And it's just... And I think that there's... Mm -hmm. I keep trying to t teach my sister. Not all conflict is bad conflict. Oh, yeah. And so sometimes there is conflict that's going to be good and push you guys further as, mm -hmm. as a person yourself or your friendship. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that is a good part of growing and it's something that you need in life. You don't need necessarily friends that just say yep you're right you're right you're right yeah. you're right all um, the time no, no we're we all into that. the self-help and like <laughs> yeah. digging out the ugly i mean you could sit us on a saturday with a cup of coffee i'm like i wonder why you do that yeah, yeah like, we're pretty what, i mean we're, what would what would make you do that okay you totally were just like being all weird just then like yeah you need like to... what do you think the root cause yeah. Yeah. your enneagram number is yeah. uh yeah. and this yeah. is why you and yes oh, that we definitely can... happens like, no it's not we're like it's not free all sunshine. therapy yeah not yeah. all sunshine and roses i mean mm. but we're i mean we've been around each other enough we We'll just lay it out there. Yeah. And, and that's helpful. I mean, it's, it's helpful for us. And we know, like, if she's behaving this way, I'm like, well, something obviously is going on. But I kind of know when she wants me to ask and when she doesn't, sometimes I don't. <laughs> yeah. And vice versa. She, yeah. like, will message, like, you've been really quiet this weekend. Like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, but nice. I think, I, you know, I think, um, and I'm a single woman, but putting, the society puts a lot of um, emphasis on marital relationships mm -hmm. and not as much on the friend the platonic friendships that exist mm -hmm. and um I, I feel like it's important to kind of change that narrative because that that is i mean could you imagine life without yeah each yeah. other yeah like when, women need women yeah and my mm -hmm. husband can get really sick of some of the things i want to talk about because they're not interesting to him so i'm like you're really lucky i have her you get out of a ton of conversations well and the thing too <laughs> is that your husband could say the same thing that kara says and it's going to be taken a lot yeah, of yeah. different ways. Don't tell him that. Absolutely. I love you, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, but I think that's just the women can can accept, you know, we just think alike and we, you know, we process things similarly. Mm -hmm. And yes. so I think that that's... Um, I guess that's my lesson for today is that yeah. everyone needs to kind of find their person yes. And, yes. and find a female that will, will kind of help them out yeah. yeah, and kind of take them through life. And if you can't find them, come to the rec center. It's like a place where all the ladies can come exercise and we'll introduce so you to a new friend. over the past 20 years, are there any stories that you can really think of that you feel like either in the oils or with, with fitness that really you know that your presence 
um, of doing what you're doing with them um, has kind of changed them. You've saw, seen the journey that they've gone on. Anybody that stands journey, out? A journey, looking for a journey. Um, I mean, we don't have to name any names either. No, but. I, I mean, I'm sure there are some fitness stories oh, for absolutely. certain. Um, I, I'm kind of trying to think of one. I know that there are also like camper stories. Like mm -hmm. we get a lot of our campers who started when they were really young and then they move on to junior counselors and then you see them at Food Lion and they're married with kids and it's yeah, been 20 years long we've been there. 20 now. years doing it. But, we'll, we'll and do the, yeah, so yeah. you meet like an eight year old your first year. I mean, those kids, I mean, yeah. and they still come up to you. They're 28 hey, by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah. I'll never forget da 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 da. And especially in working with children, and this is something we really talk to our counselors a lot about like, you are critical mentor at a vulnerable age for mm -hmm. these children yeah. so mm -hmm. the way that you interact and support like is huge and so I think that even they don't realize the weight of it maybe until you're a parent but like so that's something really cool we get to do because some of these kids are coming from not yeah. great places well and you know I think that that speaks a lot to just your presence in the people world that you, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what, you know, I'm sure that there's somewhere, somebody's listening to this podcast right now and they're like, Kara, like, this is me, Kara, I'm sorry, Kara, this is me, like, I, you impacted me. And they're, Aww. they're like, screaming, you know, yeah. because, and you're like, I didn't even know that yeah. I, I made, meant that and much, I think you that's, know? I think that's something that probably does happen. And I mean, we all have that, that person yeah. that oh, you're like, yes. oh my gosh, they were just awesome. Yeah. And they have no clue. I, like a total I, I fan actually, girl. When I yeah. first started working my job, I had a woman that was in marketing and I was kind of doing a little bit marketing. And she said, you're doing fine. You, and I will probably once or twice a year, I'll, I'll send her a text and say, hey, you just remind you, you changed my trajectory mm -hmm. just because you kind of believed in me. Yeah. And so I, I think it's important to kind of remember who knows what impact you have? I think, too, that, you know, women need women, but women need to be kind to one another and encourage each other. It's so hard. It's hard to just just be a woman and growing up and getting older and being a mom and being a wife. And there's so much negativity out there. You don't have to look far and you're going to find it. And to, to be an encourager, like you're saying that she was to you, just encouraging you, encouraging others. People need that, and it's yeah. so sad that, and I was brought up in a house where I got that. I was very much encouraged and loved, but people, not all people grew up with that, and mm -hmm. so that's something I want to always do is just pour encouragement. You can do it. Like, yes, you can. Absolutely. Yeah. And whoever it is. You being the superintendent, that really spills over into everything at the rec center because sometimes people will come over and, you know, they're asking about, like, do you have a membership or this or that? And we're like, this is, you know, how we do things. And then occasionally you'll get like, well, what about your competition? I'm like, well, we, we don't really have competition because we're not in a competition. Like, yeah. there are enough people in this town to mm -hmm. feed all the businesses yeah. so mm -hmm. the people who this is a good fit for awesome and if somewhere else or go to all the places you know yeah. like we, yeah we we're don't not care. competitive yeah. minded and it's really just about like lifting it other also people doesn't up. like people will come to classes for five six weeks and then they disappear that's fine seasons yeah. change oh. we don't get upset or we don't cry. Why is she not in my class Yeah, anymore? no, seasons definitely it change. It's just, and we're, if we see you out, you, they don't have to hide. We're well, like, hey! It's a really interesting, Kara, like, as the leadership position that you're in, as a female, I think that it can be a difficult position to be women of leadership mm -hmm. um, and figure out kind of, because I think sometimes when things are um, bothersome, people will say, well, she, she's just a woman. She's mm -hmm. just being emotional. Yeah. And it's like, but I care so much about this. And so mm -hmm. how have you kind of learned to lead the team that you're leading um, in a way that, that kind of fits to motivate the whole team? Um, that's a good question. I, the, the only thing I can think of is just, I thrive off positivity. And I just, like I said, I, negativity is easy to find everywhere. And I just avoid it like the plague, not because... I'm it's naive or, or yeah, just... I just, that's not my mojo. And so I'm always going to turn to, all right, team, let's do it. That's just naturally in me. And I like creating a, a team feeling like we're in it together. Um, so 
I would maybe just say it's just naturally how I've been born to to be, but and I mean if I'll toot your horn a little. Like <laughs> she's got a great confidence about her. She can be very um when she wants to, she can be very decisive about what she visions, you know, our events to look like and does a good job delegating and, you know, is very complimentary to the team that's helping her. Um, so it's it's fun being her wingman. Yeah. Thanks. That's good. Thanks, so what's man. the five year, like what, five, ten years from now, where where do you think you'll be? What do you think? Are, are we like revealing that there's like a big change coming up? No, oh, no. I was, <laughs> like a little I, was, there, like, I was thinking, yeah, I good. added up on my calculator like, the other day. Like coming out <laughs> yeah. and we're like, actually Ooh, going, going on tour. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like, I, like <laughs> Kat and Nat, when, when they, like, you could be their fill-ins if, like, yes, they get, co you it. know, you could come stateside and they, they yeah. stay in Canada. That would yeah, be this so was, fun. Like, the professional setting. We can yeah. get a little, yeah. a little candid um, when we're, yeah. we're by yeah. ourselves. No, we, I mean, we're not afraid to make goofy faces and totally yeah. make fun of ourselves. I'm a TMI and person, so I really do have to, like, yeah. rein it in sometimes. Rein it in. Yeah. So five to ten years okay. from now, what do you think? Do you think... You'll expand leisure services to other things. You think you'll still be wow. at leisure services? I think, I mean, you know, as long as I'm not fired or anything, I think I'll still Rick be was there. The I, think I'll still, yeah. I think I I'll mean, still be there. That's that's my plan. Um, I think I have 13 have, years to retire. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we've, <laughs> I've got, I mean, if the sky's the limit, you know, we've got all kinds of plans. Um, you know, of course, uh, the, uh, there's a pool coming there's, in. Yes, yeah, so that's the biggest in. thing on the horizon right now. And mm -hmm. hopefully in five years, like, that'll be in action. Yeah. And I would hope so. We'll be yeah. busting our campers over there. But yeah. there's also, I mean, we've talked about if there were ever to be an expansion at the rec mm -hmm. or like a, you know, a different, um, what do you call it? Like another facility, like a... Another building? A remote or a remote, something yeah. like, like a rec center like if, too. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. you know... I, the programming that yeah. would be mm -hmm. that you can an option add. Yeah. yeah and cookville has grown so much that i think this is an exciting time to be in recreation mm -hmm. and with the park system because that's a huge thing that people move here are looking for and so we get to be part of that like programming yeah. for new people i mean all the time somebody's coming in like well, this is, you know, this comparing it to the city they just came from mm -hmm. and things that they're used to and trying to. We were, we were, you know, in a really cool spot because in October of 2005 was when the rec center was built and opened. Um, and we busted up in that place and we were like. We'd never had a building. Yeah. Crickets, crickets, crickets. Yeah. I mean, there was just, there was nothing filling the place at that time. Yeah. Nobody knew about the building just yet. It was not the hub of anything. And there'd be days of just silence. We might have two people come in. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. No, and it is packed all the time, Busting which is scene. just yeah. even just foot traffic. And then with the expansion of the gymnasium in the back, I mean, it's just, it's huge. So that was just a, you know, mere 15 so, plus years well, ago. Well, and when you've, when you've stayed with something so long, sometimes it gets, you're like, well, I've, I've kind of seen so many of my hopes and mm -hmm. dreams come about, mm -hmm. but it, I like the fact that you guys still have um, the drive to like, okay, well, we're not done. I mean, we've been here for 20 years, but we're not just sitting in our desk, putting our feet up. Like right. we're seeing where we can go and what we're excited about the new pool and how we can expand camps and yeah. another building. And I like to see that there's still, you know, life after. Yeah, yeah. as long as it's still like cranking up there. I mean, like as soon as father daughter <laughs> ends one year, my brain starts oh. like capturing things of the next year. Like, what can we do? If people yeah. only what do we like? What are the color? Like, I already start the time. As long spent. as that still cranks every year. Well, and father daughter, that's a crazy. I mean, yes, that's like um, black. Uh, Black Friday's calmed down now, but that's like Black Friday shopping when you get to have to get the tickets for oh, Father Daughter. Absolutely, that's I'm glad crazy. that it went all online and it took us out of. There yeah, would be the people situation. waiting in line with like those portable fire pits oh like my. at the front door. It was, it was scary. It was that's... like Hunger Games. Like I thought like going into the building. Yeah, I think in the it morning. still is a little bit, but yeah. now you just don't. We're just, yeah, yeah, we don't have to be the girl who says, yeah. that was the last yeah. ticket. Yeah. We'd reach yeah. into yes. that bucket <laughs> behind us and be like, you are the chosen one to get the last <laughs> tickets. All right. So if people want to find you guys, how can they find you personally, professionally? How can they find all the uh, things? Well, yeah, we're at the King Creek Recreation Center. Yeah, and all the time. Um, our Facebook is King Creek Recreation Center um, and Instagram, same thing. Um, 
Uh, oh. But I'm Kara Sheets. You can, you can find us. Jen Webb. Jen Webb. And then our oil pages. Stock them out on uh, Facebook. Yes. yes. And our, we're, and our your little oil page is Modern Day Hippies. Modern Day Hippies. Mm -hmm. So check them out. I love what you guys have going on. I love what you do to support the women's community here in town. And uh, thank you for being here today. Thank Thanks you for so having much us. for having us. Thanks for tuning in to Powered by Her. Go and check out PoweredByHerCommunity.com to learn more about what we do. Bye.